So we're going to look at uh, a use case for the Persona Toolkit, which is to establish regular performance testing between your site and other sites of interest, such as network providers or remote collaborators. And the reason that we would want to have regular testing established is really uh, based on a couple of different principles. The first reason is if we think about how network performance measurements are often taken, they're, they're done as a one-off. Somebody may log on to a machine and, and do a, a performance test, and then they have that information, but they really have no way to compare this against long-term trends. So when we think about the reason that we would want to set up a regular test, we're able to, to store this information without human intervention, without somebody having to go in and, and rerun this test all the time in some centralized fashion. And we would do this for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is we want to have a, a notion of what the historical performance looks like between our site and different locations around the world. And we can do this by having this stored measurement plotted in a graph or perhaps being fed into a, an automated system that would alert us when there was a problem. If we think about the reasons why we'd want to have this performance measurement, we want to tie this back to, to real world uh, situations. Let's say we start to develop a problem between our site and some other remote collaborator where throughput uh, is reduced for some reason. And because of this, their users aren't able to do what they're, they're trying to do on the network. Using this historical regular testing data, we can have this fed into an alarming system so that network engineers can act upon the problem and fix it uh, in an expedient manner. We can also plot the historical results of network upgrades by having this regular testing going in the background. And we, we now have a, a metric that we can compare against. We can see what the benefits are to, to network upgrades as they occur. So we're going to look at four different types of regular network testing. And through each of these, we get a different piece of information. Uh, but we're able to set this up through the Persona Toolkit interface. So if we look at our standard toolkit interface here, off on the left-hand side, we'll notice that we have a field called configure tests, and this is stored under toolkit administration. If we click on this, it'll ask us to authenticate because this is a functionality that is, that is only available to uh, power users. I've already authenticated, so it's not going to ask me to do this. On this host, we already have a couple of these regular tests configured, and we can see them stored right here. We have options to, to go in and reconfigure these, maybe delete the test or disable them completely. We're going to add some new tests right now. The first test that we're going to add is called a throughput test. This is a measurement of bandwidth, which is how much uh, of the network we can utilize at one given point in time between our host and some remote destination. So the way that we do this is we go into add a new throughput test. And when we click on this, you'll notice that we get a little bit of a warning here. This is a warning that's configured to come up on all person or toolkit hosts. And it lets us know that we've configured tests already. And there may be a little bit of an interference between these different metrics. We can click add test anyway. And we get a small dialog box that lets us set up this throughput test between uh, the host that we're attempting to, to test against on the remote side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a, a small description so that we can identify this over time. So I'm just going to call it the video throughput test. We can use the default options for the rest of this test configuration, but I'll explain each of them. The first option here lets us know which interface on the host we want to use as our, our egress interface for testing across the network. In this case, the default is fine. If our host had multiple addresses available, we'd be able to select them in this case. The next field is the time between tests. This is how often, over the course of a single day, this test is going to be run. So the default for this is running a test every six hours. So really what this gives us is it, it, it launches a test four times in a 24-hour cycle up on approximate six-hour intervals. This gives us a good indication of how things are going to perform over the course of the day. The test is 20 seconds in duration, and this is a TCP-based test. What this means is if you're running other traffic on your network, and most people are, TCP will back off in the, in the face of congestion. So this will not impact other production traffic, and they'll give you a good indication of what this tool would be able to do uh, on a laden or an unladen network. The other option that we have here is to use the TCP auto-tuning functions. We're just going to use that. If we didn't use this, we'd have to specify a window size. So once we've added this test, it'll show up here in the listing as the video throughput test. And the next step is we're going to need to add a physical host into this. 
we would get this through the bottom part of the screen right here where we have test members. We start off with nobody in the test. So there's two ways that we can add in hosts. We can just add in the host by hand. In this case, I'm going to use a host of a collaborator, the persona.nsrc.org host. We can use the default port and we don't need to enter a description here. When we click on the add button, we notice that this will be added into our test members. So now we have an indication that this host is participating in this set of tests. If we didn't want to add in host by hand, we can use the community feature. We already have the communities uh, that this uh, host located at LBL uh, is participating in. If I were to click on that community, it's going to do a lookup to our global lookup service that tells us other hosts that are participating in that community. For instance, that I clicked on the ESNet community and it wasn't able to find any in here, so we couldn't add any other additional hosts from that community. Once we're all done and we have our tests configured and we have our hosts added, we click on save. We always need to save and this, what this will do is it'll write the configuration files on the back end and it'll also start to, re, to restart all the essential services. So it'll start making the measurements right away. After the save is complete, uh, we can exit this page and we can look at the results of the measurement. Now note that since we're only going to be running the test uh, four times a day on six hour intervals, the results will not show up right away. It's probably best to look the next day to see if you have any results showing up from this test.